All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle paid the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why, all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Look. Yo, 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 it's your boy G Hollywood, man. We're back to you with another one. First of all, you know what I'm saying? I need you to like the video, I need you to share the video, subscribe to the channel. It's hiphopbusinessdaily.com, Hip Hop Business Daily on YouTube. Today we got a special guest. I ain't gonna introduce him because he, he talks, he speaks very well. You know what I'm saying? He can talk for himself, so I'm gonna need to feel it. Yeah. I appreciate you. What's up, everybody? I'm Roshan Franklin. I'm an actor uh, on a show called FBI, a Dick Wolf series. Um, number one show on network TV for the past two or three seasons. So, you know, feeling blessed about that. You know what I'm saying? That's dope. So, that's what you're at now. Let's, I mean, you grew up in LA. Yeah. So, let's tell the people. How you guys started? You got discovered when you were 14 years old. Yeah, yeah, I got a... So, uh, tell the people about that. So it was crazy because I was with my boy who was, um, he would go up to Hollywood every day and, and try to work on a rap demo. This one is doing demo tapes, <laughs> right? So he was working on his demo tape at some studio up in uh, from, uh, from Hollywood Boulevard. Okay. And one day he's like, yo, you want to roll with me? Like, you know, going up there, just come through, whatever, kick yeah. in. I was like, all right, yeah, I'm going to see what you're up there doing. I wasn't really into music like that, but, you know, I was adventurous, an adventurous right. kid. So we took the bus up to Hollywood, man, and I'm in the elevator in this building right on Hollywood and Highland, and I'm in the elevator with a, with a bunch of white folks, man. I start cracking, <laughs> yeah, I start cracking jokes, you know what I'm saying? I was like, man, whatever I was saying, you know, I had them laughing. You know what I'm saying? And one of them was an Asian, Italian. Okay. And he was like, you must be an actor, man. Like, you really are going, you gotta be an actor. And I was like, nah, but I'll be an actor. Like, what are you talking about? And he was like, well, look, if you're serious, here's my card. Call the agency and we'll set up a meeting with you. I was like, all right, cool. And was, man, like 10 minutes, and so I go to the studio and I'm talking to the producers and they like, man, wait, an agent just gave you that card and this and that? And they was like, man, forget calling, go up there. And I was like, word? So I went right up to the agency, knocked on the door, and I was like, yo, what's up? What y'all talking about? Like, y'all trying to sign me? Like, what we doing? And so they signed me on the spot, man. Damn, that's that's, that, was the, that was the start of uh, my acting career. I didn't even know how to act. No classes. You know, it was yeah. funny. And what was the first show that you won? So the first thing I ever did was, after I signed with them, about two months later, I, I booked a commercial with Shaquille O'Neal. Okay. A basketball uh like Lay's potato chips or something like that was a commercial. Yeah. So my first gig was a basketball commercial. I was playing basketball anyway. Right. So I got that. That was pretty easy. You yeah. know, easy for me. Yeah. Just dribbling in the audition to see Shaq. I remember it too, it was funny. So that was my first job. And then within a year of me like auditioning and kind of doing my thing, I booked Nickelodeon. Okay. Uh, Kenny and the Kettle show, right. all of that, like all the old Nickelodeon joints. Um, I started doing some Nickelodeon stuff, and then from there it was like, I did a series on Fox. He just starts going. Yeah, yeah, from there you just start going. Right. You just building up your resume, and you, you know, you just on the grind there. You, know? you mentioned basketball. We're gonna get back to this, but you were on loving basketball. Yeah, yeah. yo, I, that was like <laughs> that was funny because it was just a couple of lines in that movie. I mean, I was still yo, this was years ago, but we were doing these basketball scenes, and back then, like, if you do a movie. They'll like throw you lines, throw you extra stuff and this and that. So they brought me in as like a basketball player okay. on, on one of the teams that um, I think Omar Epps was on, right. right? When he was doing his basketball scenes and they would just, they threw me some lines and they threw his other kids some lines. Okay. And so from there, like you get contracted in as a day player and do all of that. But I didn't audition for it. I just went in as they was just looking for like local basketball talent that could just be there every day. And so they threw me some lines, man. I was like, okay, that's what we're talking about. I don't think he made the movie, though. <laughs> but yeah, I got the credit. Yeah, so, but, yeah, yeah. you know, everybody my age probably want to know, Greg, our generation. Mm -hmm. What was it like working with Sinai Lee? It was Rita, Smother, and Phil. Yeah, yeah, man. She was thick. She was thick. You know, honestly, I'm a young boy. I'm like, oh, who is this? Who is this? Who is this? Yeah. Because, I mean, you, you got to remember back then. The young actresses, uh, African American actresses at the time, was on like these sitcoms and stuff. It was okay. the, it was the Brandies, you know. Yeah, right, um, right. That it was like that that Steve Harvey era and all of that. So Sonia came out, movie star. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Chocolate looking good. So people, were, I mean, you, you got. I remember that era when she was popping. It wasn't that many at the time that was like her age group. 
gorgeous like that, chocolate system movies like back to back. You, you either was Halle Berry back then, or it was a huge like opening for like fresh talent. Right? You know what I'm saying? And she came, she came with game, was killing it. So I remember that vividly. Same with Omar Epps though, because he was from that that class of um, Derek Luke, Omar Epps. Uh, you know, it was, you remember you remember the cats, man? Yeah, of course. I want to say Marlon Marlon Wayans might even be in his little. Little, little now speaking of first talent, right? Yeah. Because you brought that up, the way you got put on was unique. You kind of just like walk into it. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I know it's hard trying to come up as an actor or an actress in this day and age. Like, what advice would you give to somebody trying to get on? Yeah. Just, you got to get put on type of thing. Was it hard work? Like, what is it really? You know what? Doing? I would I would always suggest going to acting school for one. I, I feel like that's a that's a lost idea these days because of social media a lot of people you know you can do skits now and kind of somewhat get put on and this and that but if you want to be a, a pure actor and do movies and be a series regular on a show acting is always king like your skills are always going to be king right? because you're still auditioning in the room and at the end of the day they don't really care how many followers you have. Or I mean, that's a myth. Like, okay, all these followers on Instagram. No, you got to go in that room and kill the part. You got to kill the audition. Then everything else might play a part. So, for instance, when I got FBI, they didn't even they didn't ask me about my social media. They didn't know how many followers I had. I went into the audition, killed it. I fit the part. I got the role. Yeah. So that's still what acting is all about. So I would say, you know, find a good acting program. Do your two, three year program, whatever you gotta do, you know, Juilliard, you know, there's a lot of you know, right. so like which in FBI has so these me to this. Um, tell us about Agent Hobbs, man. Yeah. <laughs> Agent Hobbs, man. Well, but I'm the only brother on the show for one. So, you know, that's not that's not one. You can't miss me, man. I'm one, you know. So uh basically I just um, I'm a special agent, so I'm just helping every episode I, I just kind of help solve the crime, basically. Right. So Data, you know, data analysis, um, tracking the perk or whatever. And, and, you know, it's, it's a lot of computer stuff. It's a lot of, uh, you know, really fast cuts. Um, you know what I'm saying? Break, pulling up stuff on the screen so we can all see it in the jock, which is the FBI uh, kind of headquarters or whatever. And so we're all piecing things together to help solve the issue right here. All right, now tell me about that, right? Yeah. You ever, like, when you come home, you ever get caught up? Like, you think you're an FBI agent now? Like, you tell us about, you, you know, know living the rule. Yeah, after, you know, in the beginning, it was like that. I feel like in the beginning, it was like that. I was, I kind of had that uh, FBI. Okay. <laughs> walking around thinking I'm a cop on the train, just looking, <laughs> you know. But, you know, after a while, man, it's like, all right, this work. So right. you go there, you knock it out go home and, and, forget, and try to forget about it. Um, especially once that episode is over and on to the next, you kind of have to forget about it and move on. So, it's, yeah, but movies is different, man, because you, when you're doing a movie, you kind of find yourself living in that zone for that time period mm -hmm. more than a uh, TV. Um, right. at, at least procedural dramas like I'm on. It's like, you know, you go in there, you knock out the episode, and you're about it. So talk to us about movies you've been in, like, what's your favorite? Well, so my biggest was what men want with Taraji P. Henson. That was, that they had a, a good uh, cult following, deal well in the box office. Uh, we were supposed to do a part two, but, I, you know, this is pre-pandemic and all that, so how I was, that just part. How was Taraji to, like, work with? She cool, like, she's super, super, same, man, super. She would bring her little French bulldog to set, you know what I'm saying? A little dog running around, and she's hilarious, man. She's, what you see on camera from her in every interview, is how she is in person. That's how she is. She's straight up who she is. She's very authentic, hilarious, full of energy, like a lightning, like lightning ball. Like she's just like she run, and that's why she can hold down and be number one, in, you know, in, in a movie. Like she can be the lead because she has that that energy of how to um, anchor everyone together and make everyone feel welcome and stuff like that. She has that, that magic touch and that's what makes her, because being the number one lead in a movie, like people don't realize that what goes with that, you know what I'm saying? You have to, it's the same as uh, being a CEO of a company, right? Think of Jeff Bezos, how he has to 
anchor everyone and pull everyone together and what he doesn't know, he makes sure that the person that does feels welcome and stuff like that. And it's the same when you're the leader of the film, so Taraji got that, you know. So speaking of that, right? Yeah. Is that like a goal of yours in the future? Like you working towards being the leader? Yeah, for sure. Like, I think I have what it takes. I got the the uh, the business brain, you know, and charisma and I I know how to keep people you know, engage and, and focus, you know, because you gotta be, gotta kind of be able to motivate people and, and help people feel like they belong. I, I have those qualities, so for me, it's just the opportunity. Yeah, the opportunity you, just gotta match. Well, you directors out there, it's a pitch. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. Let's go, let's go. I'm ready. So you know say directors, man, everybody knows, dum, 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 okay. What is it like working with? Dick Wolf for working on one of his shows, man. That's, man, that's it's, legendary. Yeah, it's legendary. He's, he's, he's like the top TV producer that ever lived. I mean, my man is, I mean, he's probably got, I think, nine or ten shows on, on air right yeah, now, which is crazy. That's crazy. Um, you know, David e. Kelly being one that was up there and stuff like that, but Dick Wolf just took the cake in the past, like, five, six, seven years. Yeah. So, like, I haven't met him. He's got so many shows and so many cast members. I haven't met him personally. Okay. Um, Cause you got a lot of the OGs I've met him. Cause he's he's out in LA. He's not really out in New York that that often. You know, we mm -hmm. film here. All his shows film like here in Chicago. But being on his show, it's like down to a science man. You you getting into a, a system. It's like playing for Popovich. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. You going right into a system um, that's set up and, and well oiled, well uh, oiled, mm -hmm. and you got to fall in line. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like playing for the Spurs back in the day. Pull up. Tony Parker had to pull up and fall in line. That's you know, success. That's, yeah, yeah, and that's success. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's what it's like. You just get right in there. Everybody's working and operating. Everyone has worked on another show of his for the mm -hmm. most part. They came from Law and Order. They came from the Chicago Fires or whatever. It went to FBI. And so it's it's this like well oiled machine, right? So yeah. Speaking of OGs, have you ever met or worked with Denzel? I've met, yo, I've met <laughs> Denzel. I got a funny Denzel story. I mean, I, I, so I've seen him a few times in LA, but I met him once, yeah. like, on some, on some crazy stuff. So, I was, uh, UCLA used to have, um, what they still do, but in the summer, you can go play ball at UCLA in the, um, the med center. Right. And it's like open gym. So a lot of cats come through, D1 cats, old cats mm -hmm. that play pro, yeah. and it's night runs. And you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like you gotta be invited, you know somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm park, park my whip, I'm coming out of the parking structure, I open the door, here goes Denzel and Pauletta, his wife. Okay. And so they're walking towards me, and I like held the door for them, and, and it, it, it didn't register. I was like, I was like, yo, how you doing? He was like, how you doing? I was like, man, what? What's going on? Where are y'all coming from? This is UCLA at night. And it's him and, and, and his wife. Yeah. So I don't know where they were coming from or going or whatever, but that was the most random encounter. I always thought I would, in my head, meet Denzel like in a casting room on right. set, you know, somewhere involved in, in filming something. Yeah. My man was just like at, at UCLA college campus that night cool with enough. his wife. And I was like, yo, that's crazy. Um, so that's my one Denzel. I can say I met Denzel. That's dope. I don't care who was. I held the door open for him or not. Yeah, that's dope. So. <laughs> you know, um, the strength, man. Let's, let's talk about the strength. What's, what's going on? <coughs> That's what, yeah, man. It's um. Well, thank God for people like Dwayne Johnson who just donated several million dollars. Okay. To the actor fund. So the Screen Actors Bureau, we have this fund where they'll uh, you just basically apply for it and they'll help you financially get yeah. through certain times and it's, the money's dwindling. Mm. So a lot of big A listers are stepping in, donating to the fund and stuff like that. But essentially what we're fighting for is um, uh, AI is the big one, right? Because they want to, on the actor side, they want to be able to scan an actor and with, you know, with AI image and all that stuff, pay you one time and use you as much as they want for the rest of your life. They only pay you one time, right? So that's crazy. That's crazy. And so five, 10 years down the line, that's going to be a major problem. So we got to, we gotta hold our ground on that one. Mm -hmm. um, then number two, we don't really get paid residuals for the streaming platforms. Mm -hmm. So if, a, if an actor does a Netflix show, HBO Max, Disney Plus, Apple, any of those, 
you get that session fee to work per episode, but the producers and the studios are not transparent on how many views it gets, okay. ad revenue, subscriber money, like they're not transparent to where we can understand, we know how much we should be getting. Gotcha. So they're just paying like stupid peanuts, man. Like That's crazy. $10 residual checks to do a series regular on the Apple joint. Like, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Network TV, we've already negotiated those contracts decades ago. Okay. So network TV, we always get residual. And it's already it's set in stone. Like per episode, you get this and that and that. So, for, fortunately, I'm good because it's a network show. I'm getting residuals, so I'm cool during the strike. But a lot of those other actors that are on streaming platforms aren't getting their residuals, man. So, uh, we're fighting for that. That brings me to my next question. Your next plug, what you doing outside of what the networks are paying you? What you got going on with your own? Yeah, what I platforms are you on? Yeah, yeah. Um, I got a bunch of side hustles, man. I'm, I'm the side hustle king. Okay. You know, so I always tell people, look into Amazon KDP, okay. which is where you create books and journals or whatever on Amazon mm -hmm. and get that residual income. Also, I got merch, Amazon merch, where I just create random merchandise and, and sell, get residuals on that. Um, Amazon influencer program, I just okay. do product reviews. A lot of Amazon hustle. And then also uh, affiliate marketing is one of my hustles. What about what about like your YouTube or streaming or no because for that, but. yeah no so for me I want to be as if I can just open up my laptop do something for about thirty minutes a day and then get residual income from it those are like the side hustles I like mm -hmm. so the less involved I really have to be and you. then it, it's kind of like evergreen mm -hmm. and so that that's affiliate marketing or that's like creating a lot of you know, you create something and it's out there in the world for people to purchase. Um, is uh, is less less involved because, like, when I when I go back to work for film, you know, we spend this fourteen hour days. You said you don't want to be like me. Like, no, man, listen, <laughs> we need, yo, we need we need YouTube. I literally watch YouTube yeah. a couple hours a day, man. Like, I learn so much off YouTube and I get so much information off YouTube. To be a creator on YouTube. Is you gotta have that passion, you gotta put a lot of that time in, sure. and then you build, you know what I'm saying? Which is awesome. But for me, it's like the idea of I can fly to Portugal mm -hmm. for a month, got my laptop, coffee, boom, 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 let me make that bread, put that away and enjoy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because all, just because I already have my full time career as an actor okay. and filming. Everything else has to be like less involved. I got you. That my side hustle. Yeah, it's time for that. You know what I mean? So, speaking of Portugal, right? Yeah. You know you got some travel stories, man. You've been all over. Man. You spoke off camera. Yeah, yeah, man. I just got back from Brazil. Put it out there. Okay. Let's, let's talk about Brazil. <laughs> Brazil is now my favorite country oh, in the world. Man. I've been a lot of places, man. I can only imagine why. Man. <laughs> Brazil. Oh, yeah. The food? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the food. The food. <laughs> It's the food, man. It's the food. <laughs> <laughs> that chorizo. You know what I'm saying? So how long you out there? Uh, I, I was there for two months. Okay. Um, Damn, that's good. Yeah, almost two months. And so, best country, man. I mean, the people, the music, the energy. I mean, there's live music playing every 50 feet at a kiosk, which is like the beach restaurants. The energy, man, everybody's so warm and welcoming, even though you don't speak, you know, I don't speak Portuguese at all. They don't even care. They'll, they'll try their best to communicate with you. Because they're just, you know, Brazil, man, the people there, it's less digital distractions in Brazil, right? right? So it's really about family, friends, and community, and having fun with friends and family and community, yeah. right? So I, that's the first time in my life I've seen so many old elderly people, like almost like 90, 100 years old, being walked by their great grandchildren down the street early in the morning, going to the beach with them. You know, you got it's, it's the community there, man, is like why people live so long. My tattoo artist out there, I got tatted. My man is 43, and his uh, father just passed, unfortunately, 101 years old. That's crazy. So I said, I said wait a minute, I did the math. I said, wait, so you're. Your pops was like 57 when he had you, bro. 
So that when was the last time you heard out here in the states like, yo, man, my dad just died, man, he was 101. My man only like 40. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like it was crazy, man. So um, that's that's definitely I'm I'm looking to buy some property down on the beach and stuff. That's what you go living off the land. Yeah, it's it's awesome down there, man. So speaking yeah. of buying property, you've been in New York for a while. How do you like it? Mm-hmm. I love New York. To me, New York is like after Rio. <laughs> New York was the best city in the world. It took me a time to Rio. Because you know, Rio is like nothing that, you know, because it is the beach and all that stuff. But New York is uh, number two, man, in the world for me just because the, opportunity, the way New York moves, man. I mean, listen, it's true. If you, can, if you can survive New York and navigate New York and find, uh, if you can become comfortable with being uncomfortable, mm-hmm. right? That's the thing. That's the key with New York. That's what I put it. You got to get to the point where you're comfortable being uncomfortable. And that's walking to the train when it's freezing. Yeah. You know, or like today when it's 100 degrees and you down there waiting on it and you drink, you know, you on your way to the city, you get out, you got, you know, it's just like, it's it's very, you know, people sit right next to you on the yeah. bed. You might have your little space and somebody on you know, like, and just look at you like, and say something. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you look, you know what I mean? Like, you got problems, like, ah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, best museums. Most of the diversity here is like, you're gonna see everybody from around the world. The food is on point from all cultures, right? It's the hip hop, you know what I'm saying? The people moving and shaking. You know, I, before I moved to New York, I didn't really think about multiple streams of income in the sense that when I got here, like in LA, people, you know, you might have one job and you might do some real estate. Right. You know what I'm saying? It kind of stops there. Right? You might have an Airbnb situation and then you, then you do this. It's like, you know, maybe two, you got your main thing and maybe one other thing. Because people in, in, in Cali like to kick back and chill. Relax. They don't want to get uncomfortable in life. You know what I'm saying? They, they want to they be in their little car with the AC on, playing the music, going to one spot. And that, and that, you know. But out here it's like they're moving and shaking, man. So I really picked up on that. And I can live anywhere else in the world now. Perhaps after New York, you know? Before we get out of here, you mentioned, um, being uncomfortable in LA, right? Yeah. You also mentioned that in the beginning, took a bus ride with your man out to the studio when you were a kid. Yeah. How was that growing up as a kid in LA in the time that you grew up, bro? Man, you have to had to be great. You yeah, you had head on swivel, ear to the streets. Mm. You knew you knew where to go, where not to go, what time of day. You you know what I'm saying? You you had to at a young age. You have to really know how to move because the way the gangs was set up out there, you could be on a quiet block, man, and somebody just gonna come down your street and, and just want something that day, you know. So um, you gotta learn really young out there, man, how to really move and tip your toe, man, how to like, you know, move in the shadow, so to speak. And so um, it kind of molds you, you know, as, as you grow up, you, you know, you can kind of. It, and so, like, even growing up in LA, when I moved to New York, I already had that antenna. So it's kind of like, oh, I'm not, I'm not going over here. You know, it don't make sense for me to be all across town over here and this, this, and that. I'm not, I'm not that explorer in people's hoods type dude, right? because you couldn't do that in LA. So I'm not about to come to New York and do that. I'm not about to go to Atlanta and do that. Mm-hmm. Chicago, dude. Like, let me, you know, let me find out where it's, it's copacetic and, and do it. You know what I'm saying? Do it like that. So. I'm glad I survived, man. Unfortunately, a lot of people. Um, Any uh, close calls? Man, a lot of close calls. Yeah, it was. Bro, I, was, I, think I saw my first murder in person when I was 10. Yeah, dude got his head knocked off. Whoa, I was at the liquor store. Picked that out, you know. So, it's it's real out there, man. Uh, it's a lot, of, a lot of encounters, man. A lot of people, a lot of friends lost. You know what I'm saying? And I, you know, I had a little, I went to a county jail one time on some stuff. But <laughs> well, see, in LA, man, they'll lock you up if you don't track a ticket. Oh, okay. And, stuff. It's, and that's what it must be, it's like track a ticket. Yeah. So they'll take you into the county where cats is really in there right. on some stuff. And you like, they're like, what you in here for? I'm like, man, traffic tickets. They're like, bro, they got you. So it's overcrowded, you know what I'm saying? But being in there, you, that's a whole nother level of people with crazy stuff. That's a whole nother topic, man, with the LA County Jail. <laughs> it's like, wow. Hopefully, 
We come back for part two. Yes. We're gonna get you out of here. Anything you want to shout out? Your socials. Yeah. Uh, Instagram. Uh, Roshan underscore Franklin. If you just type in Roshan, that'll pop up. And um, yeah, uh, FBI season six. Um, we should be underway right after this strike. God willing, it doesn't last too long. And I'm back on there. And um, you know, if you follow my Instagram or whatever, you'll see other projects I have popping. But uh, I just want to let y'all know: follow your dreams, visualize it; it'll happen. And uh, speak positivity. Anything can happen. We need a shout out to hiphopbusinessdaily.com. Hiphopbusinessdaily.com. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. It's our boy. Hiphopbusinessdaily.com. YouTube channel at Hip Hop Business Daily. I am G Hollywood, man. We are going. Peace out. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Look.